this is a design for one of the windows and the designs are done to scale. They, they give you an idea of the, the colour composition, the sort of overall structure of the window. So the next step after this is to make a full size drawing. Now this is called a cartoon. So then the next stage is to make a cut line. This drawing shows me exactly where the lead is going to go. So everywhere you see a black line on here, that's a piece of lead. Everywhere you see this sh a shape, that's a different colour of glass. In stained glass the paint is black and the colour comes from the glass itself. So this window represents the luminous mysteries and these are the mysteries of the rosary that were added to the rosary by the Pope in 2002, so they're relatively recent. And basically it covers um, the aspects of Jesus' life that, during his ministry, during the time that he worked. And um, the essence of the luminous mysteries is really Christian service, it's giving and receiving. And the sort of underlying theme or note, if you like, is the Eucharist. There's obviously the symbolism, there's the wheat, and there's the wine, there's the grapes, there's the bread, um, but the, those particular colours, the sort of maroon and brown, it's almost like the colour of blood, and the gold of the wheat. It's a joyful harvest, so it's not a dull brown, it's sparkling and beautiful gold. In fact, this um, sheet here shows you some of the research that I did for the, for the um, nave windows. This is the fifth mystery of light, the fifth luminous mystery, which is the institution of the Eucharist. And you can see here when, this is a very early stage, when really what I'm just looking at is what kinds of colours represent that, and what kind of colours express that theme. And it's this maroon, the gold, the green. Um, they're sort of fall colours rather than bright summer colours or spring colours. There's a subtle difference between a, a green that works as a, as a fall colour and a green that works as a springtime colour. Um, so in this window, for example, I've represented grapes before and they've been purple. But I, I cut some of these grapes in purple and then I switched them out because basically just introducing that colour um, takes it into the sorrowful. It takes it into the passion of Christ and into the next stage. And it was important to kind of keep this sense of 
warmth mm. and joyous and abundance. So the, col the colours are very symbolic. Yeah, th that's a very, very important part of the choice of colour. I guess you'd say it's the fundamental choice. The next choice is just the same as any other painter has, which is, you know, how do I link this beautiful, gentle, pale blue with this gold, you know, without losing the, the sparkle of the blue or the intensity of the blue or the delicacy of the blue. And a lot of the time I'm bringing in these very neutral, deep colours. Notice, for example, that um, there are quite deep colours chosen here, and that helps create the form of the wheat. Now, this might look like just a big piece of yellow glass, but the wheat will be painted onto that. And it, I want the wheat to appear in the foreground, and then I want the background to, to help make it pop, you know, make it punch out. So um, choosing the, the, the actual shade of the colour, the lightness or darkness, is, is really important. You can take one sheet of glass, one colour number, maybe with one particular chemical, and it's going to come out as pale as this on one end of the sheet, and as dark as that on the other end of the sheet. And so it really is like painting. So you have this classic expression, painting with light, but it's the same process that a painter would go through if you were painting on canvas, but it's collage. It's all separate little pieces. And notice what I was saying before, you know, every time there's a colour change, it's a different piece of glass.